Now let's move on to the second item in my weekly review checklist, which you can see right here is my calendar. I really like to look at my calendar next because that's really the, the hard landscape of my day and my week. Those are the hard commitments, not optional ones, things that have to happen at a certain time, such as calls, meetings, and appointments. So I want to look at that early on so I have a sense of even if I have an upcoming meeting in the next hour or two. So I use a program called Woven, which you can see right here. It's this orange icon. And it's very similar to most other calendar programs. It has a few nifty features. But basically, all I'm doing is starting with the current day. You can see May 18th right here is, is highlighted because that's today. Um, and the way I like to do this is in two parts. I like to look about two weeks into the past and four weeks into the future. And the reason I have that rule of thumb is usually the past two weeks contain things that I might want to follow up on. I might want to resurface. Um, so let's just actually do it and see if anything comes up. So starting with today, let's look in the past. Okay, I'm just looking at meetings to see if there's anything I need to follow up on, any actions I need to take. No, actually there is one. We, we reviewed the post-course survey results but I just realized that I'm waiting for Will on the retrospective presentation for Wednesday for building a second brain. So I'm gonna hit return and that's captured in my task manager. Uh, anything here? No, nothing comes to mind, nothing comes to mind. Um, let's see. That's the only thing in the past week. Let me look one more week back. Uh, no, nothing comes to mind. I know I have to re reschedule my dentist appointment, um, but I already have that on my list. Uh, let's see. And that's it, actually. So not just one thing in the past two weeks. So now let's look four weeks into the future. The reason I like four weeks is I want sort of more visibility, more lead time, more of a warning about things that are coming up. If there's, let's say, a trip I wanna make or a big event that we're planning a month from now, I wanna already start thinking about that. So let's start on May 18th and go about four weeks into the future. So you can see the future is more sparse. There's less stuff than looking into the past, less stuff that's scheduled to happen. And so this is a bit faster. There's really not much going on this week. Uh, okay, okay. Oh, we're moving into our new place next Tuesday. Okay, so this makes me think we need to plan move-in day um, for May, what day is that, 26th. Um, anything else? Let's do two weeks. Oh, June 2nd is actually my dad's birthday. Um, so I might want to say, plan my dad's birthday present. That's something that's nice to know in advance. So got to the end of the month. Let's go one more month and look here. First couple weeks of June, see if anything jumps out at me. No, no, no. You can see as I get further and further, further into the future, there's less things, right? The future is unknown. Uh, and so this looks good. Crafting Commerce is a conference that I'm not gonna go to anymore, so I can just delete that. Um, and that's it. Okay, so pretty easy. I'm gonna go back to today by clicking the Today button. And that is all there is to reviewing my calendar. It's actually very easy. I find that even though this takes really just a handful of minutes, having this kind of visibility into what's coming, not just in the next couple days, but the next f couple weeks or the next few weeks, gives me so much, uh, it helps me so much really just keep what's coming in mind and be able to plan and prepare for things in advance rather than being surprised by things that come up uh, on my calendar in just the next week. So that is a small window into how I review my past calendar and my upcoming calendar as part of my weekly review.